Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We are gathered today on the 9th of the fifth month, which happens to be the 20th of July, 2024, on the Gregorian calendar. And we're continuing with our reading and study of Bereshit, or Genesis, currently on chapter 45. And we are now having the culmination of events with Yahusuf and his brothers. They had gone for the second time, bringing their their youngest brother, Benjamin, with them to receive grain and had everything that transpired with them that already happened. They were released again. And then, um, if you recall, the goblet through which Yahusuf was said to divine was found in Benjamin's sack. And the, the, after they were brought back, the whole fiasco with trying to take him as a slave, and then Yahuda acting as the kinsman redeemer and trying to take the place of his his brother there. Another phenomenon that you see play out in his children, not always in a beneficial context, are Mashiach being the ultimate kinsman redeemer in that capacity, but you also have um, the example of the Yahudim as the in place of the ones that rejected him and then cast out uh, what happened from after the sacking of the uh, the land by Rome, even up to its return, right? They took over that position for the ones that rejected the truth, as opposed to the northern kingdom that had been taken out beforehand. However, while the one lost its identity, they retained theirs, <clears throat> although his name was taken out of their mouths as he foretold. But that's for a different time. Currently, though, we are on Yahusuf revealing his identity to his brothers. And this is while he's in Egypt or Mitzrayim, things foretelling events in our times even, if you can pay attention to that. So it says, Walo, and not, it says could, but this is he, he will all, literally. All right, Yakol is his all or he will all, it means to be able or have power. So it says, and not he had power, Yahusuf, unto restraining himself, okay, to be strong or to hold, right? He could not contain his countenance, basically. Before all those who stood, it's literally by him here, but that's upon him, okay? And he called or he proclaimed, make go out all men from me, from, from near me, from upon me. And no stood man with him. So he said, let them all go out. And they all left and there was no man standing with him. It says, while he made him or while he made himself known, but that's, in the revealing or knowledge of him to 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 da right yada is to know i know in english we have a thing like yada yada hey when they is it yada yada for knowing a woman it's a colloquialism but that comes from yada literally to know right there from genesis and that's the word for to know Yada, right? And so he made himself known, and no one stood with him, as he made himself known, Yahusuf, to his brothers. Sorry about that. It says, and he, this is literally, and he gave, we yeten, to give, put, or set. Okay. It's like the word for Nathan. And he gave Eth aloud and he wept. And he heard him. It says Egypt. And he heard the house of Pharaoh. It doesn't read quite right, but uh, if you just take the English translation, that's why they put it the way they do. But it says, and he, Eth, aloud wept, and Egypt then heard him, 
and then heard him the house of Pharaoh. Basically, he was crying, and the people of Egypt heard, and the house of Pharaoh heard that he had uh, made himself known to his brothers, right? Wa Yeomer says, And he said, Yahusuf, to his brothers, Ani, I am Yahusuf, Haod, Hawaid, right? Who does still literally go around, continue still yet again beside. This is the ode. It's like we get the word for witness. It's very similar, but it has a, a wa in the middle. Okay. And he says, does he still continue my father to live? Chai. That was a question. It says, and lo, it says, and not yakolu to be able or have power again, right? And he says, but not could his brothers answer him for they were terrified or disturbed to terrify the whole, the whole, right? And they were terrified in his presence or before his face, probably because of realizing who he was in relation to what they had done to him. And he said, Yahusuf, to his brothers, Gishu, this is come near to draw nearer approach, right? Come near now to me. And he came near and he said, I am Yahusuf, your brother, Akikem, which you sold, eth, right, eth me to Mitzrayim. But now, therefore, says Wa Eta, literally, and at this time, not be grieved, or do not be grieved, and not yecher, be angry, to burn or be kindled with anger, with yourselves, or in your eyes, literally. But it says, with yourselves. Because you sold me here, or because you sold F me, right? It says, behold, for to preserve life, he sent, or shiliakni, this is like the emissaries, the shiliakim, or the apostles, if you will, for he sent me, Elohim, before your presence, or before your face. For this two years, excuse me, the famine is in the land, or in the earth, right, haaretz, and still, or and witnessed, and even so, it will continue. Hemesh, this is uh, five years. Hemesh Shanim. All right, in which no man, or sorry, in which ein no plowing and harvesting. And we've already gone over those, I believe, beforehand, but we'll look at those again real quick so you can see. So he said there's more another five years in which there's no plowing or harvesting. And he sent me, okay, and is the wa, he is the yod, sent is shalach, and the nun yod ni is me. And he sent me, Elohim, before your presence to preserve, all right, to preserve unto you a posterity. This is literally a remnant or a residue, a remainder, a remnant shall return to the mighty L. It mentions in other places that remnant is a significant thing here. But right here, they just have it as to preserve a posterity, which is not a very accurate translation, especially when you know the significance of this for a believer. Ah, but isn't that interesting? Serit. Serit. Like Aserit or Aserith is the um, the city of Serith or the city of the remnant that was founded by the Scythians that had been the group of the northern kingdom that after it was taken into captivity repented. They broke off and they went up the Euphrates. They were helped providentially by the Almighty's power. He stayed the waters of the upper Euphrates there. 
to allow them to get over to found that place to be their own people, to keep the law in the land where they would not keep it um, before. And that's made mention of in 4th Ezra. It's also mentioned in a secular writing of Herodotus, and it's known in secular history in a great many books, both by secular historians of the times and then by later believers writing about our ancestors and talking about that righteous remnant who the Scythians became known as the most pious people, the, the standard of morality in the ancient world. But that's for another time, too. You can find the quotes on that one in particular in the names of Israel, the, 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 cap, oh, the captivity names of Israel, or the children of Israel's names in captivity. I have to find the name of that book. I'm sorry. But I will, and I'll have it in the description for the title, and I'll share it with you all. It's got some amazing quotes, um, but it really it shows just the names. You, you have to do the legwork yourself, but it shows you what our ancestors were called after they were taken into captivity throughout secular history and time in different writings. And you can follow it down in different ways all the way to our current times. I'd never seen this serit right here and a connection with remnant, though, before. That just popped into my head because our Sereth is literally the name of the city that they founded. And R is a city. Sereth is the remnant. So that's the remnant's city right there by the Sereth River, which is a tributary of the Danube. All right, so then he sent me, Elohim, before you to preserve for you a remnant in the land and to save lives. Or and to preserve life, right? And to live unto you by a deliverance or by a rescuing that is gedola, right? That is great, by a great rescuing. There's two words for deliverance or for rescue that I'm... Actually, there's three. Pay lamitet is to rescue, generally, an escape, right? The other one is um, shua, shua, yasha, deliverance. And then you have the yidzu, or the zu, with the uh, zaudi wa he, I believe. And that's to like expel you or to, to fling something out. It's a rescuing by having you it being uh, sent out greatly not like shaliak exactly but to be flung out like someone casting away dung ah get away from me which is how the children were expelled out of egypt they were oh just just go take our money take the gold and go leave us right but anyways this is excuse me wa eta and now, or and at this time, they translated as now, but na literally means now. So this one is this time, literally, at this very moment. So, and at this time, know you, that's Aleph Tau, Mem, but that's pluralized, right? Know you sent to me, right? here but elohim so he says you guys didn't send me here but elo the elohim this is another mention of ha, -em ha elohim all throughout bereshit here but it says for the elohim right and he has made me right he has placed me literally remember shem has a meaning of here or there so he has set me here to put or place or set, right? Shum. As a father unto Pharaoh, or unto like a father, concerning a father to Pharaoh, and concerning Adon of all his house, and a ruler, Mesel, Mosel, right? To rule or reign, to have dominion. If you put a yod at the end, that's mishli, which is the word for Proverbs. 
But it says, and to have a ruler over all the land of Mitzrayim, or Egypt. It says, Meharu, Meharu, right? Is to hasten, Mahar. But you have the water, Maharu. Hurry him and go up to my father, or uh, hurry him, right? That, yo, know, they don't translate it. I don't know why, but they'll tell you the wa as a suffix is his, him. It usually denotes that. It's a masculine ending for it. It might have other uses as well. But it says, and go up to my father and say, right? And literally, and tell them, to him, thus says your son, or the son of you, right? Yahusuf. It says, he has put me, Elohim, unto Adon of all Mitzrayim. Come down to me, not do tarry. This is not, this is delay, right? To take one stand. So not to take one stand or delay. And you shall dwell, wa ye Shabbat, wa ye Shabbat, right? And he will dwell, sit, or remain in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near Karub, right, to me. You and your children, or and your sons, or in the sons of you, right? And the children of your children, and your flocks, and your herds, and all which unto you. And I will provide, that's what I'll call koloti, right? It's literally, and all, all, right? Yeah. But to comprehend or contain, cool. So he's basically saying, and all that you need, all your provision, I will provide Ethka unto you, Shem, there. For, or it says Sam here, Sham, right? But it says there, for yet five years of famine, least, or right, pain, right? You come to poverty to take possession here or depossess. you and your household of all that is unto you. Meaning, come here and, and live off the pro the provisions here. At least you have to eat away all your property and eat all your, your animals, and then you have nothing left. Right? And behold, your eyes see in the eyes of my brother, Benjamin, that my mouth, that fee, very important, my mouth there, right? that speaks unto you. I mentioned that because um, I think we've gone over it before. In some of the recognitions of who we are as a people, the, the direction of the shout or the joyful shout that we had just gone over as mentioned in the Psalms and directly spoken of or in Gad the Seer chapter 14, the joyful shout, right? That's gone over in detail about the people who say hip, hip, Hooray, hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray, right? And if you look at hip, that's literally the mouth, the mouth. You go hip, hip, and then there's no instrument. There's no music to it. There's nothing else but the mouth, and we all give the joyful shout. That's literally what that is, just for some context of where that comes from. And prosperous are the people who know the joyful shout, right? Just something to keep in mind. Um, and that's why I mentioned it's important, but that's more important for those that have that inside knowledge. If you want to, you look at Gad the Seer chapter 14, and then you make that connection with the Psalms. And um, I do believe that Hip Hip Hooray is in volume one of two called The Missing Link on a book, not The Missing Link in the Assyrian Tablets by E. Raymond Capp but the two-volume set written in the 1800s that predates him by quite a while. So anyways, it says that my mouth that speaks unto you, verse 13, rather, 
It says, so you shall tell, or it's literally, this uh, God is to, to go and declare or to be bold and say it right in his face, right? Unto my father eth all the kavodi, right? The uh, the esteem, kavodi. All my esteem in Egypt. Wa eth all which you have seen. Just like our Mashiach, when he says, look, declare what you have seen and heard when uh, Yahukanon sent his taught ones to ask if he was the Mashiach while he was still in prison. He says, and you shall hurry and bring down Eth my father here. And he fell upon the neck of Benjamin, his brother, and wept Yabek. And Benjamin wept Beka upon his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept. And these are tears of joy. He was a happy guy, right? He wasn't holding anger against them. He was rejoicing to be reunited with his brothers that's the kind of heart that he had when we get to the testaments you'll see more clearly his disposition and character and how it was so closely emulating that of our mashiach in his disposition towards love for his brothers and the reason why he turned the other cheek and said father forgive them they know not what they do and even to this day he hasn't for forsaken his people for what we've done to the truth he says, and he wept over them, and after that talked his brothers with him. And the report was heard in the house, or bet Pharaoh, right? Unto saying, have come the brothers of Yahusuf, and it pleased, right? To be good, tov, glad, or pleasing, Right? And he was pleased in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And he said, Pharaoh, to Yahusuf, say to your brothers, this do, right? The os asa, like Maose is the book of Acts, it's an action or a deed to do or make. This do, load at your animals. And depart. Go to the land of Canaan and bring Eth your father. Then the reason why this is Kem, it's the father of them, literally the father of them, right? But they translate it as your father, the plural your, meaning all of them. Wa Eth and your households, okay, and come to me, and I will give, literally, and I give you, right, and I give her unto you, eth, the best, or tov, pleasant land of Egypt, and you will eat eth, the fat of the land, chaleb, caleb, right, chaleb, the word caleb with a kaf lamed bet is literally all heart, that's the word for a dog, lamed bet is heart, and chaleb here is fat, but when you have the heart enclosed or contained, that's that's in fat, literally. And that's the word for fat. So just another example of how the Hebrew language is literally true. And it's built off of what is. Also, when our hearts get fat, we lose feeling, right? It's part of that kind of thing. But <clears throat> it's inherent in the words there. And he says, eat the fat of the land, and you, and you, wa'eta, zuta, right, zuete, they say, command, you are commanded this, do, right, take to you out of the land of Egypt carts for your little ones, all right, for the children, taf, and remember, te tafi is the little one, the, the little child. Taffy is also the name of the book from the Irish bard songs of the the daughter of Zadik Yahu. They call him Zedekiah in the English translations, where she was taken from Egypt 
to Ireland by Yahu or Jeremiah, right? She was called Taffy or the little one. And she was also that tender little twig that was foretold about that was going to be transferred over there. This is for your little ones and your wives and bring eth your father and come, right? This is come them. And the eyes not look upon your goods. For the best of all the land of Egypt, yours is, or yours he, literally is what it says. But he's saying, don't look on your goods, for you'll have the best of the land of Egypt. He's going to have that provided for them. And he did him thus, truly, certainly, the sons of Israel. And he gave unto them, Yahusuf, carts upon the command or upon the mouth of Pharaoh. Literally, it says the command in English, but upon the mouth of Pharaoh. <clears throat> and he gave unto them provisions. Zeda, provision or food. Unto or concerning the journey, the way, Derek, right? So unto the way and to the mall he gave to each man changes of garments, but to Benjamin and unto Benjamin or but to Benjamin, he gave 300 silver and five changes of garments and to his father he sent this ten donkeys loaded with the goods of egypt and ten female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and food for his father for the journey or for the way so he sent away at his brothers and they departed right and they went and he said unto them, or to them, do not quarrel along the way, right? To be agitated, quiver, quake, be excited, or perturbed. So on their way to gather their father from Egypt, don't get excited or agitated, okay? These are all things that are foretelling stuff. We'll go over that more later. For now, we want to get the general narrative right? And, and as we go along, you're going to see how it plays out too. But all this stuff is important. You see significance. There's mentions of the way here. There's talks about the things they're doing and how they're not supposed to be antagonistic or agitated, not with one another and not to quarrel, right? <clears throat> and it says, and they went up, right? And he went up out of Egypt and came to the land Whenever you're going to the land of Yisrael or Yerushalayim, it's always going up to and the Haliyah, right? Aliyah there. And then it's going down everywhere else. Literally because of elevation, it was a mountainous region, but generally it would do that for the significance of it's going up to the, the place of importance and going down to the places of less significance, right? It says, and they went up out of Egypt, or Mitzrayim, from Mitzrayim, and came to the land, or came to the land of Canaan, to Jacob, the father of them. And they told unto him, unto Sain, or concerning the words, unto this time, or even to now, Yahusuf is alive. And for... It says, and because he is governor or he rules in all the land of Egypt and stood still, right, it says, to grow numb, pug. This is, and grew numb his heart because not he did believe them. So he was like, ah, oh, he was shocked, right? But when they told him, Eth all the words of Yahusuf, which he had said, or which he had, which Debar, right, which mattered, or he had spoken to them, excuse me, and he saw Eth the carts which had sent Yahusuf to carry him, then revived the Ruach of Yaakob, their father, 
So he didn't believe them because of their words, but the evidence of the facts, the things that he saw accompanying their words, proved it to him and revived his ruach. He was using truth and reason. And said Yisrael, Rav, enough. That is greater many, right? He is saying, basically, you've, you've convinced me enough, right? Up to now, Yahusuf, my son, lives. I will go and see him. I will go and I see him, right, new, before I die. I moot. All right. I do believe we have some time so we can go on to the next chapter. Just one moment, though. All right. So we're continuing here in chapter 46. And this is Yaakov's journey to Egypt or Mitzrayim. Right. It says, so took his journey, Yisrael. And it, it, there is a significance now. His name is Yisrael again instead of Yaakov. There's a few mentions. Twice he's his name is mentioned as being changed, but you see that he's called Yaakov in in, her, in between then again, still, and then later on he's called Yisrael. These are all significant. It all has meaning. The fact that we will all be called Yisrael at that time because there will be no remnant or no residue of inequity in us that's foretold to happen and this is what that is alluding to in his uses of his name and the third age of of believers if you will this is so took his journey yes rael with and with all or and with all which unto him and he came to this is the bara right they have that as two all right, Beersheba, okay. So then they came to Beersheba, sorry, and he offered offerings, sacrifices unto the Eloah of his fathers, Yitzach. And he spoke Elohim to Yisrael in the visions of the night, right? In the vision, Mara, right? Halila in the vision of the night, and he said unto Yaakov, Yaakov, and he said, Hini, Hinini, right? Hini, here I am. Wa yo Omer. So he said, Anoki ha el Elohi. I am the El, or I am the El, the Elohim of your fathers. No fear. Don't fear, right? It says to go down or from going down to Mitzrayim for unto a nation great I will make you, right? Unto a goy gadol, right? A nation or people, goy, right? Gadol, that's uh, the word for great. It says I will make you you or i will put or place you literally there and that's that i shem ka shem literally okay i know it when the more you see these the more it's gonna it, it sounds kind of funny when you try to pronounce it in hebrew but these where it says the word and repeats it there's a a pattern it does it quite often it is very rhyming if you read the the um, Taffy, right? It's bard songs, but they've been translated from the Irish, which was originally Hebrew, into English. It's a very interesting thing, but it's almost the entire thing is sing-songy. It rhymes, and it's telling a narrative. It's rather, I find it amazing. I, I didn't think you can do something like that and still make it sense, but apparently it's possible, and it's quite prevalent throughout the Hebrew. We just miss it because we don't speak the language. But here's one example. 
And he says, Anoki Arad, and he says, I will go down Imeka, right, with you. That Yahuwah Imeka, Imakam is Yahuwah be with you. It's right here, right? And I will be with you from Egypt, and I will bring you up also. It says surely here, but that's a, I don't think that's the word for surely. I think that's for a pawn. Yeah, to go up, ascend, or climb. To approach, arise, arose, ascended, to be a pawn, or to come. Okay. So this is, and I will be a pawn, and Yahusuf, and will put his hand on your eyes. And I will bring you up, Ali Ka. Yeah, and I will ascend upon you. Yeah, and I will bring you up also. Upon or up. And Yahusuf, he will set his hand upon your eyes. While you come, and like the comb of a rooster, right? So what stands on its head. And he arose Yaakov from Beersheba. And he carried, or he lifted up, bore, or carried the sons of Yisrael, Eth, Yaakov, their father, and their little ones, Tephem, Tephem, right? Wa Eth, their wives, in the carts which, it said, Shalach, right, had sent Pharaoh to carry with him. So they took Eth, their livestock, Wa Eth, their goods, Rekushem, property or goods, Rekush, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan. And he came to Egypt, or Mitzrayim, Yaakov, and all his seed, Zaro, with him. Now, this is significant because it this is not, this is saying that all the seed of Yaakov went into Mitzrayim, but not all of them stayed there as we went over, you know, last week when we were talking about the lost Luna stones and the migrations before the exodus of Moshe, the evidence for that there. You can see all his seed went into the land, but not all of them stayed. There were promises given that they would be delivered, but not all of them stayed there while the tribulations and things were happening. For various reasons, they left that we're not going to get into right now. So it says, his seed with him, the sons of him and the sons of his sons with him, and or in the his daughters and daughters of his sons and all his seed. And he brought with him to Mitzrayim. Now, if any of you are familiar with the Hebrew in the Stones Tanakh or the Masoretic text, quite often they'll have a psalmic at the end of verses and that is just a break. That's an added letter that wasn't originally there. So they don't have a translation for it and it really it shouldn't be, but it's something they use to separate chapters or verses or whatever if you will so it says those who went to egypt or mitzrayim it says now these wa ale right now these were the names of the sons of yisrael who went to egypt yaakov and his sons or and the sons of him bekor the firstborn of yaakov reuben and the sons of reuben Hanok and Palu. A wonder, astonishingly wonderful wonders. Remember, it was a wonder that the one who was ravaging the assembly was now preaching the Mashiach. Maybe why he was called Palu, right? I believe that's how they have it spelled in the um, Sefer version. Not that I, I can't recommend that 
personally for other reasons, but that might be the accurate name for Paulu and Shaul and uh, for whatever that's worth. It says, And Hezron and Carmi and the sons of Shimon, Yermuel, Yermuel, and Yamin, and Ohad, and Yakin, and Zohar, and Shaul, the sons of the Canaanitess, or the lady of Canaan. He also married, um, not all of these were the sons of that woman, because after he repented and he married another woman uh, of the, the lawful kind. If you remember, or if you're not familiar, when we get into the book of Yobelim and the other writings, you'll see it as well. But because of the covenants they made, they they swore they would not take the land allotted to their brothers. Canaan broke it, and he was cursed. Because of that, because of the willful, malicious evil that they did towards their brother, just like it mentions in Gad the Seer chapter 14, they were given over the purview of Satan for him to do what he would with them. And these were the people that he used to do the most heinous things in the most precious land. And because of the things that they were doing willfully, when the children came and the fullness of their inequity was up, not a man, woman, or child was to remain, but the righteous judgment of our maker was that they were all to be taken out. And that is the truth that we have to keep in mind here. Okay? He does nothing without purpose, and there is no arbitrary evil. He's love. He's perfect. So the reason why these things happen are because it's justified under the law, and he is righteous and true. Right? Otherwise, he's full of compassion and mercy. He, this is his nature. He cannot be contrary to himself. Right? But anyways, every one of the sons of Canaan and its seed was going to be put under the ban because of what they were doing. And the children were prohibited from mixing. When he had realized that, he repented and had a wife outside of them and had children that continued. But he did have those of Shimon professing to hear that would really be outside of the covenant. Okay, Just like Yahuda married a Canaanite woman. And there was things that happened because of that. All right. And the sons of Louis, Gresham, Kohath, and Merari. And the sons of Yahuda, Ur and Onan, and Selah, or Selah, and Perez, or Perez, and Zerach. But died Ur and Onan in the land of Canaan, and were the sons of Perez. Hezron and Hamul, and the sons of Yishakar, Tola. And, and notice there's no sons of Zerah mentioned there for whatever reason. This is in the sons of Yishakar, Tola and Hua, and Yob, and Shimron, and the sons of Zebulun, Sered and Elon. And Yahiel or Yah Liel, these were the sons of Leah whom she bore to Yaakov. It says in Padan Aram. The in is the bet, and then Padan Aram is the name, right? And with Dina, his daughter, all the persons, his sons and his daughters, thirty and three. And the sons of Gad, Ziphon, and Haggai, Shuni, and Zibon, Eri, and Aridod, Aridod, and Areli, and the sons of Asher, Imna, and Yishva, or Yishwa, and Yish, Yishu, why Yishu, or why Yishwu, right? They say Yishvi here. And Yishvi might be the absolute legitimate way they pronounce it in the modern Hebrew, which I have no problem with, but we want to be honest. And honestly, the, the Wa in classical 
scriptural or biblical Hebrew was never a V sound. This is 5013 grammar, basic Hebrew grammar. They teach that, but they'll go and they'll say the V anyways, and they'll just get people to acknowledge things that aren't true. And that's what I have a problem with. So while people might say this today, and they, if they're speaking a different language, modern Hebrew, you know, whatever, that's fine. But you want to acknowledge what it is in reality. And in the in the Bible, that wasn't a V. So I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But we, we do want to be honest, right? We always want to be the, loving the truth. So sorry about that. It says, and Barari, uh, Bararia, Bar, Bararia, Beria, sorry, and Sarah, or Sarah, their sisters, and the sons of Bariach, Heber and Heber. That's interesting because we have an Eber that had been traveling to and going places. And Malachi, or Malachal, right? These were the sons of Zilpha, whom they gave Laban unto Leah, his daughter. And she bore eth these unto Jacob. Six and ten, or sixteen persons. The sons of Rachel, the wife of Jacob, Yahusuf, wa Benyamin, and Benyamin. And were born unto Yahusuf in the land of Mitzrayim, which he begat, or were born unto him by Asneth, the daughter of Pontifar. The Kohen, or priest of On, eth Manasseh. All right, it's causing to forget, right? Something that while he was being caused to forget his afflictions while he was in his land of, of his captivity, his children themselves have forgotten who they are while we are ourselves being taken captive, right? And this is generally foretelling the half-tribe that became a great nation being America. I don't know if it's spoken of, mentioned anywhere else, but I do believe the other half-tribe is what we'd call Germany or the other place of the Saxons there in the heartland. Just like it was split up in the land, it was split outside of it as well. Wa'eth Ephraim, and Ephraim being Britain generally and the commonwealth of the British nations that joined with them. That was the Meloha Goim, or the fullness of the nations coming in, foretold by Yaakov and mentioned by Shaul that the veil would be in part over the children until the Meloha Goim. And that was a, a foretelling the fact, excuse me, that we would have forgotten it was hidden who we are. And you can actually trace the evidence of that in history as far back as... Um, the dooms by Alfred the Great in the 800s AD or so, when he was codifying the common law using scripture as its foundation, he declared that he was a son of Yepheth because that's what he thought was true at the time. But we know better now. However, <clears throat> the son, it was hidden from us until the Meloha Goim, and it was around the fullness of the British Empire, the commonwealth coming about, that the um, British Israel movement became prevalent. John Wilson was one of the first in the 1700s to start doing lectures all over Britain, talking about how all the Germanic peoples were really from the Northern Kingdom. So, And then it just went on from there. He wasn't the first voice. You can trace a, a line of people witnessing this here and there amongst the children for a long time, all the way back to... Uh, I believe they can trace it to the goatee and the goths and, and, and that effect. But you can you can follow it along here and there, just a, a few people knowing these things and talking about it. But Ephraim being aware of who they are did not happen until the Meloha Goim, until the times where the Roman, or not the Roman, the British Empire was coming to its fullness there. It says, and the sons of Benjamin, Bela and Becher, or Becher and Ashbel, Gera, 
and Na Naaman, Aki, and Rosh. Mupim, or Mufim, or Mupim, sorry, and Chupim, and Ered, or Ard. These the sons of Rachel, or Rachel, which were born, or begotten, Yelad, right, unto Yaakov, and all the souls, four and ten, so fourteen. And the sons of Dan, Hushim. Now remember, or if you're not familiar, he actually had five children. But in his testimony mentions, or in Book of Yobelim, it shows that most of them died before coming into the land there because of his great anger and wrath that he had towards his brother. And the things that he had done in his life, it was represented in his reaping what he sowed in his children. And he only had one survive. Sadly, he foretells that that would continue in his children as a type that persecute his brethren. And you can see that throughout history, too. I don't mean that to condemn anyone, but it's when we come back together in unity and we all repent that things will change. And that includes Dan. That includes the people of Denmark and the Irish Roman Catholic Dan. We have to repent. Right? But that's an acknowledgement of who we are and coming together as one as the children of Elohim, not fighting, right? Says, and the sons of Naphtali, Yahaziel, Yahaz El, right? That is the, the, the rescued of El, or the yeah, or the apportioned of El. There we go. Chatsa is to divide. All right. But see, my problem there, they say that's from Chatsa. That looks like a Zaudi, but they have an Achet Ayin here. That That's quite different. So I'd have to see how that word is related. Here they have a Zaudi. Maybe that could be a typo because this is a Zaudi. That's a Zaudi. Okay. So right here, I believe this right here is just a typo. They have an ayin, a chayth ayin hay, but that should be a zaudi there. I'll double check later to make sure. All right, so the apportioned of El. It says, and Guni and Yazir and Shalim. That's in Shalom, right? And these were the sons of Bilha, whom gave Laban to Rachel or Rachel, his daughter. And she bore at these unto Yaakov. All the souls or persons, seven, and all the persons going with Yaakov to Mitzrayim who came from his loins, or who came from his Yereku, thigh, loin, side, or base. Excuse me. But who came from his loins besides the wives of the sons of Yaakov, and all the souls were sixty and six so besides his wives and the ones that were already there right and the sons of yahusuf who were born unto him in mitzrayim the souls were two all the souls of the house of yaakov who went to egypt were 70 and then it has in some it says 75 but the, the sons of dan had died right there might be another version, I believe, that says 72. I can't recall that off the top of my head there. The um, the things that we cannot be dogmatic about are things that only have one witness. That's the part that we have to keep in mind. If we had multiple witnesses of the, the list of the names and the reckoning and two or more agreed exactly and one was deviant, then you would tend to take the two witnesses to establish it just as he said. And that's how we should literally do everything in Scripture, but not, not to be impartial about it, but just to take what it is as it is and love the truth. It says, And Yahuda, he sent before him to Yahusuf, unto pointing out before his face, or to, it says to point out right here, to throw or shoot, Yara, right? It's literally to instruct or direct before his face, 
right? Goshen. And they came, or and he came him to the land of Goshen. It says, and so he gathered, or, or sorry, so he made ready, it says, to tie binder in prison. So, so he bound Yahusuf, his chariot, and went up to meet Yisrael, his father, to Goshen. And he, it says, and he presented himself, but that's literally, and he saw unto him, and he fell on his neck and wept upon his neck at that time. Or, in, right. And he said, Yisrael, to Yahusuf, let me die now. That word right here is hapita. A beat, foot, anvil, or occurrence, right? It's a footstep. But it's literally, let me die now, right? Now he can go away. Like, now it can continue because he's seen the face of his son, right? He says, let me die now since I have seen at your face, Paneka, right? For until now you live, right? And he said, Yahusuf, to his brothers and to the house of his father, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and say to him, the brothers of and my house of my father, who in the land of Canaan have come to me. And the men shepherding, Ro, right? That's the word for the shepherd is a row. And the shepherd is he. Haro or hero. That's where we get the word for hero, if you remember. We talked about that before. And then that's related to Pharaoh. The pay in the Egyptian is the hay in Hebrew. It's the the the. So you have Pharaoh is just the hero or the shepherd, just like you had right um in hero itself, which goes back to Nimrod, tying that in together. But excuse me, it says in the shepherding their flocks. For the Enosh, right? These are the men of livestock they have been, and their flocks and their herds, and all that unto them they have brought. So it shall be, or and it came to be, for he calls unto you, Pharaoh, and, and he says, What what do you do? Like what are your deeds. Basically, what is your occupation? Right. And you will say, or they will say to him, the men of livestock have been your servants from our youth, even until or and until now, and witnessed, right? Ata, even at this time. Both we, Anachnu, and also our fathers that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. Now, this isn't relevant unless you're learning the Hebrew, but Anachnu is the full Hebrew for we. By itself is a word. Anachnu is literally the I and I and them, or I and us, right? It's You look into it more later. But when you take this word, you drop off those three letters, the, the first three, and you just use the new as a suffix on other words for the letter or for the meaning of we. Ele Elohenu is our Elohim, or the Elohim of us, if you will. And that's how this is used, that Anachnu, the we, us, right, as opposed to them. Just for some context, if you're learning that, you'll learn about these full words. They're not used all the time. Most often, it's just the suffix or the, the last part of it that's attached as a suffix to words. But this is a knock new for we. It says, and or gam also our fathers. That abor, right? For the sake of or on account of, right? On account of you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for an abomination to the Mitzrayites or the Mitzrayim are all shepherding a flock. 
Now, it's an abomination to them because, remember, the physical is supposed to teach the spiritual. The things that happened before are a literal representation of spiritual applications later. We don't get quite all the context, but Nimrod and the birth of, of fake religions came from Ham's land into Shem, where they planted Babylon, he planted places in Macedonia, and later the sons of uh, Zoroaster, the second Zoroaster, who's also known as Mitzrayim, that's made known in the recognitions of Clement, when they returned back to their own land, they brought the mystery religion stuff with them. They called their kings the, the hero or the shepherd. They were abominating the things that were beneficial and esteeming things that were abominations because they were invested with demons and they were being led astray from things that were true. While these men didn't know better, Satan does. And he intentionally would pervert those things. All the things that they would eat are an abomination in the Torah and all the things that they would sacrifice and offer were abominations. And then everything that is clean and meant fit and fit for service was abominable to the Egyptians by practice through this means. So father willing, you can help get a little bit of comprehension on those things. And then you can see how that plays out in our times. And even to today where you have you have everybody in the world knows what a Yahoo is, but they don't know Yahuwah and the the one who's mocked and calling someone that. Right? And it's completely, a, we, we, we don't recognize how much this happens, but it's prevalent throughout all of our lives and ingrained throughout our culture. And hopefully in this picture, you'll start to see that a little more. But um, I'm willing that was edifying. Uh, we'll see if there's anything else for anyone at the moment. And then if not, uh, we'll wrap things up. All right. So that seems to be it for this week. We will pick up next week with uh, Jacob settling in Goshen, Father willing, unless something else comes up. But until then, you all have a wonderful Shabbat and a beautiful, wonderful week ahead. Yahoo will be with you. And thank you for your time.